Thank you for tuning into the Andy Social Podcast. My name is Andy Dowling, and if you are a first time listener, this podcast features yours truly, speaking to a whole range of different people from different backgrounds and professions. I've had radio personalities, authors. Well, there's a siren in the background. Something's going down. Anyway, I've had radio personalities, TV hosts, musicians, documentary filmmakers, um, authors, mindfulness masters, pilots, professors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You name them, I've had them, or at least it feels like that anyway. Uh, but that's the gist of what this podcast is all about. So straight into it, this week's guest is Michael Cusack. Now, the name might not ring a bell to begin with, but I believe, I'm, I'm putting money on it, that more than likely you've probably seen one of his creations on the internet somewhere. So Michael is an animator. Um, he's done a whole range of different uh, animations over the past several years, and in my opinion, probably is best known for his YOLO videos, um, as well as the uh, Damo and Darren series, which started off with Siggy Butt Brain and sort of manifested from there. And he's done a whole range of different uh, different things. He's recently worked with the Bondi Hipsters. He's done a lot of uh, sort of more high profile work, but. Um, his stuff gets major hits. Uh, we talk about it in this episode, but he's sitting on millions and millions of views on his channel on YouTube and his individual videos. I think, uh, I think the YOLO videos or the original one got to something like seven million, um, something like seven million hits or something like that. So we we touch on it in the uh, in the episode anyway. Seven point seven million. How crazy is that? That's a lot of people or just maybe one person just watching the same video over and over again. Anyway, <laughs> enough of that. Uh, so I caught up with Michael at the Unandera pub, which is uh, pretty much Wollongong anyway. And uh, it was very uh, fitting surroundings given uh, some of his videos that he's done in the past, but we touched on all that in this episode. Everything we discussed was gonna be over in the show notes over at andysocial.net. I'm gonna put a bunch of these videos that I've been speaking about. Uh, I'm gonna embed them in the show notes so you can check them out there. I'll also post them on social media as well. So make sure you check them out. But uh, enough of me yapping on. Please enjoy this episode with Michael Cusack. Hello. Hello, sir. How are you doing? How's it going? Welcome yeah, to the podcast. Yeah. Yes, here we are. That's <laughs> so where we're actually recording now? We are, yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. So uh, do you want to describe where we are? Do you want to describe our surroundings? Uh, we're currently at the Unandera pub, yeah. uh, located in Unandera, yep. which is a suburb of Wollongong. Local clientele here yep. seems to be um, predominantly male. Yes, yes, yep. I've noticed that. Uh, there's a dog too. There's a dog behind me on the ground. It's just your classic uh, Aussie <laughs> pub going on right now. Oh, Aussie yeah, vibe. A, yeah, that's right. Um, I would. You mentioned before you've been here for like twenty odd years and you've never been here before. So I'm the reason you've actually yeah. come into this pub. Yeah. And I would have thought that a pub like this would have been your main source of inspiration for a lot of your animations. Nah, nah. <laughs> uh, like I was saying, I would never walk into a pub by myself uh, in fear of being cast out for not being manly enough. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I didn't. I never. I've never been here before. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, it's not like I don't like going to pubs, but yeah, this is a bit too, too local for me. I've always wanted to go here, but yeah, you know, just don't. Just never did. Uh, there's something about some of these local pubs that are just a little bit, uh, yeah, a little bit intimidating at times, especially when it's like, well, but, oh, it's now the afternoon, but I was going to say, if it was the morning here, it's only a certain type, a certain breed of people yeah. that come in. Morning, <laughs> morning is weird. Like, that's when you, it's like the 50 to 60 year old men in like those button up kind of checkered shirts <laughs> with like the graying hair. And you're just like, what the, f like, what is your life? Do you have work? Is it just, I guess some people just retire yeah. and they go to the pub from the morning to night that's it oh. does it sound like it's such a bad life well it sounds okay i guess i saw um while i was waiting for you to rock up i was in the car park and this guy pulled up next to me with his wife left her in the car went inside for probably about 15 minutes and then just came back out so i don't know whether he went into the tab or or he came <laughs> in just to slam a schooner and then yeah. come back to the car but she just sat no, there and just put up with it that was one of the pub ghosts so that's a <laughs> that's a common thing the ghouls and ghosts of the pub they just hang around they're the, they're the ancient <laughs> ghosts of the pub <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I i did see a guy rock up in a motorized scooter and he had a little australia flag on the back of that and he was on a mission i think he almost knocked someone over coming into the pub so yeah. he's he's captain keen making sure he gets in for his uh for his schooner of uh, old brown or, or whatever else is on tap <laughs> old brown <laughs> yeah we should have gotten old brown <laughs> he really set the scene um so i think first things first um I messaged you last night just to make sure you're up to speed. 
because you're the the mastermind behind the infamous YOLO video, yeah. um, I wanted to make sure that you were well up to speed with the Lord edition of it. So you have seen it. Yes, I have. I remember seeing that. Uh, that was one of the first videos where I was like, because that video doesn't get that much fan art. Like, a lot of cartoons, especially like my friend's cartoons, they'll get lots of um, renditions, you know, people drawing the characters. YOLO, not that much. I don't think yeah, I've really. seen... I actually don't think I've seen any fan art of YOLO. So when I saw that video... I was like, oh, that's really cool. Like, you know, I knew that it had gone relatively all right like, yeah. on, online. But when you see that kind of stuff, it really it shows you. It's like, oh, people, it's making an effect. Like, make people quoting it and stuff. It was cool. <laughs> it was very cool to see that. It's, um, it's I mean, <laughs> I think I checked this morning. It had like 7.7 .7 million views. Yeah. So it's had a couple. So that's not too bad. But I guess when you're just seeing like a, a view count, you don't really know. Yeah, that's that's a... That's the thing, like I was saying, when you just see the numbers, like, of course, at first, it's like, holy shit, hmm. million, you're like, you're really, it was amazing when it was going yeah. viral, but after a while, you kind of get over it, and I think it's just because you're looking at numbers, and you're not, you're not actually seeing people react to it, Yeah, yeah. And, and whenever you see that kind of stuff, it, that's when it really hits home, you're like, oh, yeah, fuck, yeah, actually, people watch this, not just, <laughs> not just digits, not just numbers, so yeah, it's very cool. It's sort of like, um like with this podcast when I'm like doing the interviews and talking to people each week and whatever and then I see a, like a download count nothing like your videos but I still see a download count and I know that technically people are listening to it but you don't really get any feedback so you don't really know mm -hmm. who's who's listening who's actually enjoying it what, how much of it they're listening to they could be listening to like 10 seconds or watching 10 seconds yeah, of yeah. your video and then just turning it off I mean I think you could see a bit more of the analytics behind it but yep. it's um it's only when people sort of react that you go oh fuck yeah that's right there's actually yeah. people watching this it's exactly yeah. yeah that's the weirdest thing to me and it's, uh it's always weird when it's like I get sometimes like people over 40 over 50 coming up being like oh I love YOLO like, it's just like people are the same age as your parents <laughs> it's like fucking hell man it's, I, it's so weird and you'd never expect someone like seeing someone going inside an asshole raping poo that's like <laughs> 60 years old but uh no it's, it's I'm always shocked at you know I, when I make something I'm never thinking too like oh what demographic should I hit should I hit the uh the 60 to 70 market so it's usually it's just embarrassing when I'll yeah I'll be like, fuck, like, especially, I didn't even think about my parents watching YOLO when I made it, and then after, I, like, immediately regretted it, because then they had to explain it to their friends. Oh, no. And you got all so, that so asshole stuff. So they've actually there. seen it? Yeah, yeah, they've seen it. My dad brags about it. He used to be a taxi driver, <laughs> and he used to, like, um, because he's, like, a chatter. He's a yeah, big talker, yeah. so... He's the, he's the kind of cab driver that if someone gets in, he'll start just talking their ear off. <laughs> oh, so, and, <laughs> so my son, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my son, so he'll be like, ah, oh, so he, my son, yeah, my son, have you seen that, ah, uh, that yolk like video? And they're like, oh. you know, sometimes I'll be like, oh, no, no. And you'll get, he, he's got a bookmark. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah he'll, get, he'll get his um <laughs> iPad or phone and be like, oh, just check it out. Just, uh, yeah, watch it. And he'll get them to watch oh, it in the car. God. That'd it's embarrassing, awkward. man. Yeah, it is awkward. But apparently, I mean, sometimes they're like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen now. Oh, your son made that," and that's the that's the little heroin hits that he needs. <laughs> if it's like they've seen it, he's like, "Oh." But I mean, I'm, you know, I'm I'm proud of that. I'm happy if he's happy. Whatever. Oh, it's better it. than him being like, "What the fuck are you doing?" That's right. Oh well, it's a bit of a bit of artistic genius for for some people. Um, <laughs> what did that even come from? Anything in particular, or do you just sort of make it up in your head and? A lot of people, spit it out. Yeah, a lot of people ask, where did YOLO come from? I, I can't remember. I mean, I remember I was just like out one night with friends. It wasn't even like clubbing. I was just out. You went at like at the, the Ox or well, the Glass House or anything like that? I think I was just like at a friend's house. <laughs> and we had girls there. And they weren't even being that annoying. I think um, I think I was just in a bad mood. So I just came up with a, the idea there. And I don't, I don't know why, because it was like the girls I was with weren't being annoying they were friends mm. I think I was just thinking about going out in general yeah yeah and uh yeah I was in a bad mood I remember I was in a really bad mood that night and I just thought you know clubbing like, just exaggerated yeah, yeah. it to the 10th yeah. degree and I think it was the same with Damon and Darren too it usually comes from some kind of irritants yeah and yeah. it's not always good because yeah. it's not you know not all my cartoons come from me being like pissed <laughs> off but those two specifically I guess it's because it's like those kind of characters in the real life, you know, they get grading. And mm. I mean, it's fun to exaggerate them. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I think there's, um, it, yeah, definitely exaggerated in places, but there's other parts where, I mean, I've watched it with mates or whatever, especially like Demo and Darren, and I go, oh man, like I've met those people before. Mm. I've met them. Well, the funniest part about 
uh, Yolo and Damon and Darren is the people that like them the most are usually the people that they're making fun of <laughs> the most. So I've had friends, like um, female friends, tell me that before they go clubbing, they'll watch it to get them prepared to go clubbing. Get them psyched. Yeah, get them psyched. Oh. I just I would never have thought. I thought they would have like, hated that shit. Oh. Same with like Bogans. It's funny, like... Bogans always refer to other people as Bogans and not themselves. It's kind of like the hipster in, in denial, cycle. In denial. Yeah, yeah. So those kind of people like Damo and Darren too, because like, oh, yeah, yeah, Damo, that's making fun of those, those Bogan guys, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, oh, those fucking Bogans, fucking, let's kill them all. <laughs> it's like, man, you, you are one. <laughs> well, uh, I watched, um, is it your Plasma TV, one that you put up a couple of oh, days yeah, ago? yeah, yeah, yeah. So as soon as I watched that, I watched that this morning with uh, with Jess, my wife, and we instantly thought of a house about two blocks away from us where it's a corner house and there's just constantly, like, toys and shit and overgrown yeah. grass everywhere. Yeah. And it's just this... It must be a, a house-o yep. um, house that's there. And we just instantly thought, that's what must be going on inside. Yeah, yeah. Just, that's exactly... I think that's where it came from yeah. for me, too. Like, I've got a house similar to me. Where it's like it's funny because you'll compare it to the houses next to it yeah and they're just so clean commissioning houses you know just those plain houses and then it sticks out like a sore thumb yeah. with the overgrown grass and like broken tricycles out the front <laughs> and shit and i love that but yeah i think that was that must have seeped in as being that kind of house like out the front of the plasma tv house you'd have the overgrown grass and <laughs> shit i don't yeah i don't know i I just like that kind of stuff. I don't know why, it's, and it didn't come, because I remember when I was being a kid, I used to be, I used to live next to uh, a family that used to argue a lot, so yeah. they had a lot of domestics, and they used to scare me heaps, and I used mm. to always imagine what was going on, and I I used to vividly imagine, like, kind of like what you'd think now, like a crack den, and yeah. like them just being really skinny, and like having cuts all over them, and arguing, and I never, I never actually saw them, but I'd yeah. always just hear it, so yeah. Yeah. I think that kind of stuff, and I was only thinking about it the other day, I think, that kind of stuff added to wanting to make cartoons like Damo and Darren and that Plasma TV one. Oh, it's like, I think that, that last one that you did of Damo and Darren, the servo run, and the, they're in the house and his his missus is just yeah. going off. And it's like this, it's, it's exactly what I said, it's like this yeah. crack den. It's just like this yeah. piece of shit house and there's just crap everywhere. Yeah. It's just in ruins. Yeah, I think that the, the way I drew that house is how i imagined my neighbor's house to look just like with <laughs> just dark and dingy and like shit like covering like um especially like the the drapes covering the windows i remember trying to look in the windows and it was just like there's like not even curtains covering the windows but yep. just you know like blankets and shit yeah it's just like fuck what is going on in there <laughs> <laughs> with um with demo and darren i noticed that you you took it a step further and you had like its own facebook page and, and everything mm. set up is it was it something that you're hoping even still because the first one came out a few years ago now yeah it was like 2014 yeah are you still kind of thinking that that'll be a long-term thing where it gets its own traction or no no nah, nah, nah. uh, like i a lot of people think oh you're oh, doing you're doing a big les show thing you're like ripping off the big les show it's yeah. it's not i'm not gonna it might even be done with it now yeah they weren't there at first it was just kind of a siggy butt brain that yeah. thing yeah like the, to be honest, the only reason I made sequels is because it went so viral. Is yeah. like I should, I should probably like release sequels, seeing as people want to see those characters. Mm. And looking back, I can tell there's not the same kind of passion in the sequels, even though yeah. I do like them. The first one's obviously the best one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I never. I remember when I first, like I was coming up with the idea. I did think like, oh, it'd be good as a series. Like mm. I was even thinking of like a movie. Like yeah. before <laughs> the, you know, I released Siggy Butt Brain. I was thinking mostly just set at the train station and shit yeah. just happening at the train station but you just get over it like, I'd, I'd rather just make other little cartoons and not focus on one thing because i'm not that good at just focusing on and those two it's hard to it's really hard to kind of stretch out that concept yeah you know yeah. like or they go somewhere they say shit and then darren yells at damo like that they'll get old pretty yeah. quick. unless you introduce a bunch of other characters I mean, the, what might still happen, I don't know about like a Damo and Darren long run thing still, but what might happen is I might do like another show or series thing and mm. those characters might pop in and out. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of reoccurring characters mm. in the background. But yeah, I'm kind of, it's kind of done now, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, um, it's interesting because, I mean, it's sort of like the YOLO one, you did the second YOLO one. And that's still, I mean, I, th I think the, the second yellow one's still got a, over a million views, but it's almost like, and I, I'm the same, like when I get an idea, is that spark of adrenaline, 
that for that you and you invest so much energy into that first idea but then after that sort of the follow-on you start to lose that mm, yep. lose that energy exactly yeah so it's almost like yeah. you're kind of replicating what you felt yeah. so and and i thought that was the best thing to do and now i've kind of come to the realization i'm not i'm not good at that i'm better at just going with whatever dumb idea i'm you got I'm excited the, about at the time yeah even yeah. if it's even if it's not even animation, yeah. you know, even if it's like doing something musical or doing yeah. like a live action video, it's better to just go with whatever you're keen at the time. And I jump around so yeah. much, yeah, yeah. so I'll, I'll lose interest really quickly, which is bad. Like it's just like ADD or something. But well, it was cool. Yeah. Cause I was going through, I was going through your page this morning, and I was looking at all the videos you put up, and you had that one. I wrote it down. Um, is it Frank Fellini? Yeah, Frank Fellini, Fuck, yeah. man. I was like, as soon as I watched it, I go, there's got to be more of these. But it, you'd probably be a similar situation as the other ones. Like, do you try and continue to do more of them? Or is that if, just a one-off thing? If I'm excited about it, if I, like, what I, what, how I think of it is, like, I like to do a bunch of dumb shit, and then it's, like, it's shelved. So yeah. if I am get that kind of spark back again, I'm like, oh, yeah, Frank Fellini's on the shelf. I can bring him out and do <laughs> that. Or I can channel that idea into this thing that yeah. I've already done. So yeah, Frank Fellini is something that I want to do again. Yeah. Definitely, I'm actually um, I'm going to LA in two months. Yeah, right. And I want okay. to do because he's a he's a Frank Fellini is a LA Hollywood native. I want to do some oh, videos. Is so actually a real person? Oh, oh no, no, it's me. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Straight oh, away. No, I'm just gonna meet him. I'm gonna meet him up in LA. <laughs> Um, Fuck, I'm so gullible. <laughs> no, I'm gonna do. I want to do some videos of him in Hollywood, like guide his guide to Hollywood. Awesome. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm keen to do more stuff with him. <laughs> so yeah, it's like it's not like I'll just do one thing once and like never want to do it again. It's yeah, I yeah. Think it's good to have some, some time pass too between. It's, it'd also be good if it was like with Damon and Darren, how you're saying, oh, would you continue that as a series? It'd, it'd be nice to get to the point where it's like, all right, I made the Siggy Butt Brain thing, and now yeah. I can pass it off to like another team that wants to continue it as a series and I'll, yep. I'll sort of oversee in a way be yep. the executive producer or yeah make sure you get some consistency yeah, yeah. with it and chuck out ideas yeah. and then let other people run it in a way that'd be like at the point you know 10 years or something yeah, yeah. Got more of a production company going yeah. on but uh yeah yeah right now i like just getting excited about a, a silly idea and then just going with yeah. it is that where you kind of want to go eventually is like moving towards that sort of uh, it's not like a position. it's not like a concrete plan no. but uh it'd be nice yeah getting yeah. to the point where I mean, it's always good to think that you're slowly climbing instead of yeah. plateaued it'd be nice to get to the point where yeah you've got a production company and you've got people helping you and you know, you know movies and tv shows and stuff and yeah like i see that kind of as like a rough goal but yeah. you know whatever i'm keen just seeing where it all takes me <laughs> the crazy path that is online animation <laughs> this crazy life <laughs> but, i mean looking at some of the earlier videos that you've done compared to some of the more recent ones like there was the um uh what was the one the coffee one that you'd done oh and yeah, you had a bunch of other people involved with that so, yeah so, as opposed to you just controlling everything yourself yeah going for coffee was um christian van buren which is one half of bondi hipsters uh he commissioned that so that that was his his cartoon his idea his yeah, music right. okay cool i just did the animation for it uh but that's good i like doing that kind of stuff i mean that those kind of things are more jobs but mm. i'll i'd rather do stuff like that if i'm into the idea too and that one i liked yeah uh but you know eventually i do want to get to the point where it's just making my own stuff and getting money from it yeah but it's hard it, youtube right now the the fucking google adsense is completely fucked it's, yeah it's hard yeah. to make a living i was gonna ask you if, if you've noticed a difference in the last yeah. couple of years like because it's, yeah, yeah. it's so much harder like even sharing stuff on social media those links don't show up as much as they used to yeah. so they're sort of facebook blocking. has yeah. kind of dominated oh, that facebook's fucked it yeah so um i don't know about if you know like two months ago there was that whole youtube kerfuffle with the adsense i heard a bit it was, about it yeah so yeah. basically it just sums it up it was like the advertisers got a bit nervous about some content that was on youtube and their mm. ads being on videos that they deemed kind of like racist or not representing their company in the best light so youtube and the ads wanted to be more careful on what their ads were on and uh i saw my adsense go from like i think it was like ten dollars fifteen dollars twenty dollars a day and it just dropped down to like 50 cents wow. 70 cents a day it was like if you look look at the graphs it's just a spike that goes down <laughs> i mean already like 10 to 20 dollars a day is not that no not that great. Still something. it was still something yeah. yeah and then it just went down to like cents 
a day wow. in, yeah, in one one little yeah. Spark. Well, I was going to I was going to ask you about um, cuz I know that you did the you you uploaded again like the YOLO 1 and 2 combined. Mm. And it looked like there was an issue with the, the original YOLO video like cuz I I remember searching for it at one point and it wasn't showing up in the search results yeah. anymore. So that was instantly. So yeah. what happened was uh, when I uploaded that an hour after I uploaded it it got flagged a few times and then the ads got pulled off it because it was a uh, it was um some some YouTube videos can be 18 plus. Yep, yep. And back then, I don't know about now, I think it's still the case, but if it was an if it was an 18 plus restricted video, it couldn't have ads on it. Yeah, right. Okay. So I didn't make any money off YOLO and that's like uh-huh. one of the biggest videos I did. Yeah. I think I made like a hundred bucks off it initially in the first yep. hour of ads being on, but then pff, just got cut <laughs> and no ads were on it when it, when it was going really viral. Oh, man. And yeah, so when, when that happens, it's harder to search too. Yep. So if you type in YOLO on Google, mm. I think one of the first things that comes up is like uh, YOLO that was uploaded by someone else. Yeah, okay. And so... Yeah, it, it's fucked. It's YouTube kind of pushes down videos. Is that, that part of the reason why you, you uploaded with the the two? Yeah, that was as part well. of the reason. I did it too, just um, because I've been showing cartoons more in like demo reels and show reels for people trying to get jobs. So yep. it was like a better way to present it. Yeah, it's like a it was combined, combined thing. Together. Yeah. And people were like, oh, you fucking, you're trying to milk it more. And it was like, whatever. I mean, it was partly true. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was because like the first one didn't have any ads on it. So I was like, I wonder if I upload it in this climate, yeah. it's not going to go viral. Therefore, it probably won't get flagged again. Yeah. So that at least this version will still have ads on it and then I can show it around. And I don't know, man. It's, it's up there now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, I mean, it's, it's just incredible. I was looking at your YouTube channel alone and then I went on to Facebook, and even on your Facebook with the Facebook videos, the, the view count on some of that stuff's mm. getting up there as well. I mean, Facebook, the traction on Facebook videos is, is a lot better now than, than what it's yeah. ever been, and probably in some cases better than YouTube. It's better, uh, yeah, it's definitely better than YouTube. It's because when you're scrolling through your feed, you just kind of land on videos without even clicking on them, yeah. and you'll, you might just sit there and watch it. And even if you don't watch it, that still counts as a view. Yeah, yeah. It's just easier to share around too, and Facebook. I think Facebook's a really good thing. You have to upload to it these days. Yeah. Uh, you can't just if you're making content, you can't just be YouTube exclusive. Well, I mean, you can, but Facebook. I mean, you can't get money off it and stuff, but it's good for getting traction, yeah. getting more, building your fan base or whatever, and you can still have merchandise that you can sell. So, mm. you know, it's uh, you can link to. Have you merch. done that? Merch. I did it. For a, for a while, I was just uh, selling it from my own house. Yeah. The smart thing to do is to get someone else to sell to it. Yeah. But I was doing it, and it, after a while, I was like, no, I can't can't do this thing. I'm not that good at selling merch on my own. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll probably um, set up another merch thing eventually. Yeah. But someone else selling it. Yeah, absolutely. I was um, That was one thing I was looking at when I was going through some of the stuff this morning. I'm like, oh, man, like, you know, where's, like, the, the Siggy butt brain t-shirt or stubby holder and, yeah. and all that sort of stuff and especially for me like in in our band i'm the guy that's sort of usually pushing all the merch and getting stuff printed and selling yeah. stuff and whatever so that that side of my brain was sort of ticking over going oh man like you've got this audience yeah and it's fucking massive mm. um you know where's the, where can someone just click on something to get like the, a ridiculous inappropriate t-shirt or yeah. something or some I, sort of tag it line. is pretty dumb yeah. of me to not have that set up right now i'm just being lazy yeah that's pretty much the only but, answer but i think um i think the same at the same time for you i think if you started focusing on a lot of that it'd take you away it from does. doing that's exactly the why that i makes, stopped yeah. makes you what you are yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, you think you can do it, but you wake up and you got like eight orders, and you got to like get them all packaged, and you know, just hey, it's good and it's good in theory, but doing it yourself, but uh, ideally, it'd just be nicer to pass it off to someone else to sort it all out. Yeah. and I will do that. Yeah, uh, I've just been busy with cartoons and shit at the moment. Uh, I think I think it's better just to create the content and then and worry about it later. Yeah, I've, uh, yeah. definitely, yeah. definitely, yeah. Um, have you copped a lot of shit for some of the videos that you've done over the years? Have you had like people just contacting you and um, giving you hell or surprisingly not? no, not that much. For YOLO I haven't had like this is offensive <laughs> this is the most offensive thing I've ever seen. I haven't had messages like that. <laughs> Demo and Darren, I assumed I would get messages like you can't be making fun of underprivileged people. They don't choose to be their age smoking <laughs> cigarettes. I haven't had that. It's been relatively normal. Yeah, right. Yeah. 
I would have expected that just at the high the high volume of traffic that you you got to those videos. At least you'd have this tiny percentage of people that would just be. I mean, maybe they yeah. maybe they have commented on the videos, but it's just been buried. Yeah, I didn't see it. Yeah. I not, not I haven't had some that much direct contact about that. Yeah, um, I noticed on on your Facebook page you had. Um, you had some like just videos of you on there, just some like random vlog ones. Yeah. One where you just cut and sick saying or something like like that's enough. Yeah, I that yeah. <laughs> and I thought, oh, because you've got it's it's interesting because all your your big videos, it's animation. You're not behind like no one can see you. They don't know who you are. <laughs> no. And then you got these videos of you on there, and I thought, oh, I wonder if people start starting to like they can personalize it now. Yeah. And so it you, gets you puts you in the firing line. I don't know, man. I'll, I'll just get into. A, weird moods where I just want to film myself doing <laughs> shit like that and I used to not I mean I, I actually uploaded more videos like that back in the day before yeah. I made cartoons and then when I uploaded YOLO and like the Gabe Newell at E3 I, I unlisted those and privatized all the shitty videos of me just talking shit but I've just been doing it more recently because I don't care anymore I don't yeah. give a shit if people like oh, what the fuck are you doing make more cartoons <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know I'll, I'll I'm just gonna move when I want to film myself walking in my kitchen, talking <laughs> to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> when you um, when you're doing the stuff like um, that, the, the Frank Fellini stuff, obviously it's a lot easier to do than animation. I assume on the, on the surface anyway. I mean, how long's a, a, a video an animation take compared Ani to yeah, uh, the green screen one? So Yolo probably took about a month and a half. That was on and off. I mm. mean, if I was working on it sol solidly, it probably would have been three weeks to a month. Uh, that Frank Fellini video was about two days. Yeah. So, the uh, yeah the work ratio is much more um, much more inclined to releasing videos on a frequent uh, basis rather than animations. That's why I want to get to the point where you're releasing video like live action videos similar to that Frank Fellini one and animations. Yeah. And it's like a steady flow of what have them yeah. integrated together or just separate. Yeah, uh, integrate maybe separate maybe like having some animation with live action. Yeah. Ideally, I just want to get to the point where it's frequent, just, you know, weekly or, uh, you know, fortnightly things being uploaded. But the only problem with that is, you know, releasing those live action videos, you get a lot of comments being like, I don't, I don't follow you for this fucking Frank Flurney bullshit. I follow you for YOLO. <laughs> I follow you for the cartoons. The purists. Yeah. Uh, and then that, that makes me be like, ah, oh, maybe I should stick to, but I'm getting to the point now where I'm caring less and less and I'm just going with whatever I... I feel like doing that's it that's I it. think that's a if you're making videos and you're worrying too much about dislikes and the comments it, it's it gets it gets to you and it's bad you may as well just do whatever just do whatever you the fuck you want yeah and you feel it. better and this and this and the stuff you put out ends up being stale and generic because yeah, exactly. you're trying to please too many people it's, at the that's same exactly time. that's one yeah. of the main reasons so then it's like you've released stuff that you want to do and people are like, oh no, make Yellow 4. And you make that, but you, you know, your heart's not in it. So then they're disappointed. They're like, well, this was shit. This was fucking shit. And you're like, yeah, because I didn't want to make it. <laughs> I didn't want to fucking do it. I want to do this dumb videos of me to, <laughs> on a green screen talking shit. Is it, um, do you have a particular flair or, or interest in stuff that, I hate this word because it sounds like it's try hard, but like edgy sort of stuff where it's a bit sort of um, like not borderline inappropriate but stuff that could potentially offend people is that something that you you get more of a kick out of or is it just something like you don't think about it you just but you, do you gravitate towards that sort of stuff uh, more so? i probably grab it uh I, I probably um i think i do like doing it but i don't i definitely don't sit out and think i've got to offend the most people with this video how can i piss off everybody <laughs> uh, there's just something about it that that's fun yeah uh I will feel bad later if I realize, you know, like, oh, maybe. I think it's when you think about your parents watching it. Yeah. <laughs> so you're like, fuck. But I I'm just, proud of my yeah, son. Yeah. He's doing well. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I just like doing yeah. shit like that, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's like. Um, so I, I listened to a couple of the songs he'd put on SoundCloud as well, oh, and I'm fuck, like, man. the first thing You're I thought of, yeah, it's like man, a interview. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Expose. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, the first thing I thought was, "Fuck, man, where's like the little EP or the album or something, some, something that someone can pay to download or whatever, yeah. and make some, you can make some cash off or whatever." Yeah, uh, right now my whole online presence is a mess. I want to yeah. get to the point where it's like you're saying the merch, 
uh, release him more yeah. frequently, have a solid brand, release an EP, an album and stuff. It's all, I'm getting to the point now, it was all because I had, I was still washing dishes for the yeah. last like two, three years. I mm. had another job mm. and I've finally gotten to the point where I could financially support myself from this. Yeah, cool from this stuff so yeah I want to get I want to make an EP and an album with those <laughs> songs that you heard uh, and just now I've got all my time focused on this stuff now so, yeah cool um, yeah it's I will release a that's mad an so, album <laughs> so um, one of the things that you mentioned to me before when we were trying to work out a time and a place is you said oh man you gotta you gotta make it in the afternoon you know yeah. I'm, I'm usually sleepy in so does that for me, that sounds like your probably most productive time is in the early hours of the morning, like late at night. Yeah, I think of. like a lot of people too yeah. do an animation. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know what it is, but something about that that midnight to four a.m. Yeah. period is just the nicest work time ever. It's a sweet spot. Yeah. yeah, I mean, even like nine nine p.m. to like four a.m. It's just like there's no distractions, there's no noisy shit going on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have always stayed up to quite late and it's not it doesn't it's not all good because there's something nice about waking up at normal times waking <laughs> up when the when the sun's coming up and yeah. it, it put you, puts you on a different vibe too yeah i kind of go back and forth from getting my sleep schedule right and fucked again <laughs> but uh yeah I, I naturally just go to that nocturnal oh, i think whatever works just go yeah. with it i mean there's no there's no set way of you know functioning like every the everyday person getting up at six and going to work and doing whatever and coming home and exactly, in bed by yeah. 9 or 10 so yep. you just do whatever whatever works to get the results yep, so definitely, yeah it's cool. definitely I agree um, when you're doing some of the animations so I'll, I'll use the latest example of Plasma TV one do you do everything at home? no I've got an office right now oh, so right. Okay. yeah I've been doing uh, some stuff for Foxtel and ABC shit which right. is my own stuff it's not like working on other cartoons yeah. uh, and that, that that gave me the ability to get a little Mainly because I'm living with my mum at the moment. I don't yeah. want to get the fuck away from that. Yeah. And people would say, oh, why don't you just get an apartment? But the office was cheaper. So yeah. now I've got, like, I'm sleeping at my mum's house. Uh, little board and cheap office that I go to to work. <laughs> so I don't know. It, it, maybe it's dumb on paper, but it's, it was working for me right now. No, I think, I think the office is a great idea because I think you sort of... I think when you're at home, you've got to sort of battle all of the all the bad habits that you could potentially have of just, oh, fuck, I'm just going to sit on the couch That's for a bit or just chill out and get distracted by something else. But you're, you're in an office, there's almost this mindset where you go, like... You feel well, compelled I've, to work. That's yeah, that's, that I'm was gonna another reason. I'm going to be productive today yeah. and that's it. If I got a little studio apartment and I did work in there, I've, I've just read it's bad to do everything in, like, one room. And it's like, you get cabin fever too. Yeah, definitely. It's good to have a place that you work and yeah. then a place where it's home and... Separate it. You just yeah. can go on your laptop and go on netflix and shit yeah yeah when you're like at an office you, you're like you're watching youtube but then you'll stop yourself and be like no 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 you're, yeah. you're, you're working right now you feel bad so it's good it's good yeah. for being productive oh, that's cool i didn't even realize that so i mean it's uh as you said like i think for some people they're like oh man you could like be saving that money and and putting that towards something else but i think if that's what if that's what produces the content and gets the stuff yeah. out there and gets you moving, I think it's such a great investment of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it makes you, uh, well, at least me, it makes me more productive. Yeah. So do you do everything in the office? So yeah. Do, so you're doing the voice stuff as well in there? So uh, I get some, like I've got a friend, Brendan Caulfield, who yep. does the music occasionally on some videos yep. uh, and cartoons that I do. Yeah. Uh, mostly I'll do just all the voices and animations. So, like sometimes I'll get friends... Uh, like um, Todd, I got a friend Todd who did the a blonde girl oh, voice yeah. in Yolo. Yeah, it's nice to get just friends to help occasionally. Yeah. It, 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 I am a bit of a control freak where I like to do everything myself. Yeah, uh, but it's it is good to get like some you know someone else to help you or collaborate every yeah. now and again. Yeah, cool, cool. Um, do you um, are there particular animators or even from a comedy point of view that you sort of leverage off as far as I guess I guess I'm trying to find a less wanky way of saying inspirations inspiration yeah. that's exactly it yeah, yeah. just just say it just like say it. it just say it uh, yeah inspirations um, definitely people like David Firth oh yeah okay Fat Pie yeah. I, I remember growing up with Salad Fingers and shit like yeah. that 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 uh, kind of he's got a really it's this dark sort it's, of it's not even like the creep because he's known for being like all creepy and dark and so it's, it's more his aesthetic it's it's, it's very crafty, I guess, and yeah. uh, he's just a very creative guy. 
I remember being really scared of salad fingers too, and I, my friend got me on it. And he's, he, he told me, I don't know if he made it up or he read it online, but he said David Firth lived in the forest and was a heroin addict that oh, lived really? in a tent. And he, uh, he kind of hopes so. Yeah, just, yeah, and it really scared me. I was like, yeah. oh my god, this guy makes cartoons in a, <laughs> in the fucking forest. <laughs> that that really got to me when I was my little fourteen year old retarded brain. <laughs> uh, yeah, David Firth, uh, Sick Animation, which is another uh, animation site. Mark M. He makes a lot of really weird cartoons, like short. He's he's been doing cartoons forever. He's an inspiration. Uh, like a lot of the animation community, like Eager Raptor, Oni and G, Psychic mm-hmm. Pebbles. In 2011, 12, there was a big animation boom. Yeah. And I wasn't even an- into animation at the time. I was more into filmmaking. Yeah. And when I saw those guys making uh, all the stuff that they were doing and getting a lot of success from it, mm. I remember I was like, fuck, I could do something like that. I like drawing. I've yeah. always been kind of interested in animation, but never tried it. Yeah. Because I love drawing, and I would always download Flash every computer I got. <laughs> every new computer I'd download. The first thing I downloaded yeah. was Flash, and I just think, oh man, I wish. I've always thought the program was just too complicated for me. Yeah. I'd look at it and be like, I can't. I don't. So you hadn't done any animation nah, whatsoever. Never, never. I the only ever thing I ever did was flip books. Yep. Where you just like little stick figures blowing up yep. and killing each other in primary school and high school. I, I, I drew a lot, but I just gravitated more towards filmmaking. And animation was one thing. Was like, yeah, one day I'd love to. Yeah. If I had, if I knew how to do it, I'd, I'd love to do it. But when it was like in 2011, 12, when those guys were doing, it, I was like, fuck, I, I just, I, I love. And I, I was making a film at the time, and it was getting me down. And I was just like, fuck, I don't want to do, want to do cartoons. I want to yeah. Try, give it a go. So yeah, those are some inspirations. I just think because um, I know I know fucking nothing about animation. I know literally what you just said before, with like you know the the, the corner of the page, and you just change the, pit, the drawing ever so slightly, so it looks like the stick figure moves or whatever yeah, yeah. that sort of thing. I think a lot of people did stuff like that in yeah. school, though. Uh, yeah, and I, I, like every, a lot of people I talked to drew did stuff like that, and I think a lot of people can use Flash uh, if they just learn the really basics of it. Yeah. Because I didn't know there's this thing called onion skinning where you just see what the last frame was and then you can just draw it differently. And I never knew that that existed. And if I knew that existed when I was 14, I would have made, been making cartoons ages <laughs> ago. Earlier. Yeah, I, was, yeah. I was just stupid. Oh, I guess um, I guess you can't sort of look back. It's just well, that's naturally how, how you progress yeah. to, that, to that moment. Yeah, I was glad because being interested in filmmaking, it got me to learn stuff about composition yep. and all that shit. So that yeah. helped with the animation yeah so it all worked out all worked out in the end <laughs> would you would you ever go back to filmmaking yeah I, I would love to do filmmaking that's the thing that I've, I've finally realised that's something that I cannot do on my own yep. that's something that would be better to do down the road when you've got uh, you've got more interest from production companies you've got than, access to more people yeah and give you whatever. budgets more people yeah uh, doing it on your own it's it's kind of cool in a, in a clerk's kind of story in an independent yeah. film it's it's fun on paper yeah but fuck it man it, yeah I'd rather just go on my computer and make cartoons and yeah do it that way so that's what the foreseeable future is going to be for you is, is sort of more focused on that animation for the time being until yeah until that becomes something more like i was saying before if it gets to the point where it, you have a, i have a production company and people helping me that that that'd be the time to do films uh direct direct films and stuff like that but yeah yeah right now just doing what i'm doing yeah cool cool and so you mentioned before going to la in a few weeks is that purely for leisure or are you going to try and uh that's like both it's yeah. leisure meeting up with some friends and also wanting to pitch some tv shows and just play the game a bit play yeah, the hollywood game that's it the film glit- some frank fellini videos <laughs> what you're supposed to do when you go to hollywood <laughs> film fucking videos of yourself with a mustache <laughs> <laughs> sounds good um all right so south coast you've have you always grown up here sort of around the wollongong yeah, yeah, sort I, of area i grew up in wollongong yeah i grew up pretty much here in union Dera. yeah uh, so my parents are divorced i went back and forth between union Dera and west wollongong a lot so yeah this area has been where i've grown up when you're thinking about animation because i think i think it must be must be a sticky butt brain and it, i think that it had a reference to dapto yeah, yeah, that is Dapto. It didn't reference it uh, specifically, but 
it is the Dapto train station. So yeah. I went there, took some photos for reference. Yeah. And it is, I just drew basically the Dapto train station. It didn't say Dapto anywhere yeah. in it, but people got it. They, they yeah. knew. A lot of people say it's their own train station. You know, like, oh, this this is fucking Toowoomba train station. This, <laughs> this is uh, Frank, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but no, it's, it is confirmed here. It's Dapto. Yeah. Well, I was actually when I was in the car and I was and I took a photo of the front of the pub and I thought I can't think of a better location. Then I thought, hang on, we should have done this at Dapto station. Just sat on the, on the bench. Funny, yeah. Actually, we'll do that another that time. Good, that would yeah. be really good. Fuck. Uh, fuck. Stop. All right, delete. Screw it up, yeah. <laughs> but um, we are. No, I thought we are here. What are you talking we about? We are. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll stand next to the pokies that are doing yeah. a feature or whatever <laughs> yeah. um would you ever consider doing more sort of um i don't know what the term would be but re referencing more local areas so you can see landmarks in your animation so people can yes definitely yeah. definitely i'm i've got a huge heart on for doing that stuff yeah. i recently did a little series for abc called i wonder if i can yeah i can say it, uh called koala man yeah okay it's not it's it's not like it's just a little it's 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 like it's more um i guess lamer is a bad word but it's not got the darrows and shit in it yeah, it's yeah. it's more targeted towards it's broader i guess yeah. that's the best term for it and uh it's got mount kembler and mount uh, kira in the background oh, really? a lot yeah i love putting <laughs> even if you watch yolo too in the background and one of the shots there is mount kembler and kira oh really yeah yeah it, no one's really said it i don't I'll think have to go back and have a look yeah, if when the when the girls get to the house party, they come out of that portal and the camera zooms back to reveal the whole house. Oh yeah, yeah. If you look in the background, there's Mount Campbell, oh, really? Kira, <laughs> on the the escarpment. Yeah, nice. I think a lot of the cartoons are just set in this kind of bizarro Wollongong, mm. and I've been doing it forever. Even the film that I made, uh, that's kind of gone nowhere. That yeah. was set in Wollongong. Damon Darren's uh, set in Dapto, Wollongong. You know, the old yeah. set in Wollongong. Probably all that, you know, like Plasma TV, all those kind of Aussie cartoons, yeah. bes besides stuff like Question for Ted, hmm. they're all set in a kind of like bizarre Illawarra, Wollongong area. I think that's cool. I think um, I think if you get to a, a place later on down the track when you're doing your animations and you actually physically reference like there's signs or whatever and people go, yeah. holy shit, like I that's know that. That's what I like. That, I think that's... I want to get to the point where people go to the places where they're based on in the cartoon. And be like, Take shit, photos or whatever and, yeah, yeah, and reference I, it. I wanted to do like a map eventually of this kind of the version of Wollongong in my cartoons and it's I feel like it'd be like a little bit slanted like it wouldn't be exactly like yeah, Wollongong yeah. but it's still a bit have, of an exaggerated yeah it's like kind of it. like in GTA <laughs> 5 how um well, I can't remember what it's like Vice but what's it, whatever yeah, the um, Vineland oh okay it, whatever it is that it's LA yeah. basically yeah, yeah. it's the bizarre version of LA and I kind of want to have that. I'd still be called Wollongong, I think. I think so. But, um, yeah, fact, what was I going to say? I want to get a map and just point out, like, okay, that Damon Darren's down there, Yolo is set there in that house, blah, blah, blah. Like, just, you know, just chuck her on the U, whatever, all that That's shit. That's it. Yeah. So people, and, it, and it's good like that, because I think even though you don't have to physically animate it, people will then get a visual in their head as to, yeah. oh, when, they, when you're doing a shot out the front of one of their houses, you already yeah. know... Uh, the others are around the corner yeah, or three blocks exactly, over that yeah. way you already in your head you've made up that, that narrative yeah that's exactly it like in Koala Man you actually see Damo and Darren in it so that's oh, really? how people would connect their things so yeah. they'd be like okay if Koala Man's set in the same place Damon and Darren so that means that you know that that's the same place from that and like it's the same universe I, I just get hard on for that that's same cool. universe shit like Tarantino did it uh, Kevin Smith did it with the viewers universe I, I also like how Trey Parker and Matt Stone like they're setting everything in this kind of the, the South Park, which yeah. is the bizarre version of where Trey grew up in the Colorado the mountains. Color, yeah, yeah. I, I really like that stuff. It's because it, it, it makes you, I think, it gets you more passionate about what you're doing because you're associating it with your memories, your That's nostalgic it. childhood memories. Yeah. It gets you more into it. You're like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to. And you get excited if people are from the same town so they can get into it too. And as you said, like when you had those issues with trying to create it, like starting a series with uh, Damon and Darren finding other ways to get that creative juice going where they don't this doesn't necessarily have to be a Damon and Darren video it's just they're somewhere referenced mm, in it yeah there might just be a sign or something it might be like a wanted poster or something like that True. on a, on yeah, a wall yeah. in the background someone just you wouldn't it's not there's no focus on it but just yeah. someone who's watching goes holy fuck like yeah and I okay. think that's better for that's it's better for those characters because it just it'll get old it'll get fucking old those two talk yeah. to each other every like, yeah. 20 episodes of that it's better <laughs> if they just kind of 
appear yeah or if they're in the background just you know, come in and out, out of yeah, times yeah. yeah that's cool do you get a lot of annoying people pitching you ideas as to what you should animate <laughs> yeah yeah i mean that's a kind of common thing uh with animators you get oh could you animate this you just have to explain like i've got i've already got my own ideas yeah. i'm not gonna do your stuff but i mean i'm glad people are you know interested in fans and stuff you, you do get you do get a lot of that though yeah absolutely yeah it's um because even like i was driving here today and i'm like oh man he should really like do this and do that and it's like fuck man like imagine if someone came up to me and told me like you know oh you should play music like this yeah. or whatever i'd be like fuck off man that's like, get a bit annoying yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely it's it, sometimes your friends do it too and you're just like oh you should make a card in about that but they the good thing about that is they always catch themselves and they're like yeah. wait yeah no, i have been that guy on i've been that fucking <laughs> <laughs> um you've got uh so everything that you're doing or creating is under that gillsbury yeah, yeah, that's an name. old kind of name. Uh, that's just a... Are you going to keep that? or you... Maybe. Uh, like I was saying before, right now, everything is a mess. Like, yeah. it's all chaotic. Uh, I would like to consolidate everything onto, like, an, an umbrella. Yeah. Like a Gillsbury. Or just make a new name that's... I don't know, man. I'm a, I'm a mess right now. I, wanna, yeah. I like the idea of having kind of like a, a company umbrella name yep. the, instead of just Michael Cusack yeah. there's already the funny thing about that is there's already an animator in Australia called Michael Cusack oh really and I think that was what was pushing me to get another like a brand name and uh, is what what sort of is there a drastic difference in style for what he does he, compared he does, to you? he's been doing claymations yeah, right. for like 30 years uh, I remember even uh, emailing him when I was really young like 8 or 7 my mum found him on Google <laughs> And I, mess- I emailed him and I was like, oh, hi, we've got the same name. One day I want to be doing what you do. And I, I didn't get a reply from him. But he he's, getting, like, he's like, yeah. fuck off, kid. Uh, I, get, well, I get emails asking stuff about what he's done. So oh, really? I'm guessing maybe he gets emails asking about oh, the yellow Darren and Siggy Bob brand shit too. So I wonder if he remembers that email and is like, fuck. He's like, fuck this guy. He's just yeah. ma- making my life a hell. Yeah, like, just yeah. People keep contacting me asking about YOLO. Yeah, exactly. And- <laughs> I don't know what it is about the name Michael Cusa, but anim- for some reason, Australian animators are associated with it. Um, but yeah, um, Gillsbury, that's just a, I don't know, that was just my my site name, I guess, I used. And yeah, I want to want to get everything in order. Is it like an avatar or something that you were using at one stage? Yeah, it was like just a, just a production company name I was using for films. Yep. It's originally, I had a band called Virgin Meat back in like 2007. What? What was it? Virgin Meat. Virgin Meat. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> we had a, this law going you on. Like Crusty Punk or Grind or something we were like, like We were like crust punky uh, black metal <laughs> comedy. It was a comedy <laughs> band. And uh, what, uh, the law of the band, it was set in Mordor in like the Lord of the Rings kind of Middle Earth land. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. they lived in a town called Gillsbury, which was in Mordor, but it was like nice. It oh, was right. like okay. this little nice kind of this little pocket. sanctuary, yeah. like a little pocket that was yeah. like, you could see the Tower of uh, Sauron and like Mount Doom, but it was like kind of hidden away. It was like this nice little like fantasy kind of like little Almost acre. Almost oblivious to, to yeah, what's yeah, around. Yeah, oblivious to like the orcs and shit. <laughs> and that was where the band lived in this little house. And that, that was okay, Virgin Meat. It was called, right. the little area was called Gillsbury. Did you record music for that? We did, yeah. There's a MySpace up. Is there? I remember, I think Lord even followed us back. I, oh, that was probably I me. I was yeah, 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 following I remember, people like I remember, I remember Lord was following, like, when I was like, oh, Lord, follow me. Oh, and then you look and it's like they're following a bunch of other people. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's oh, like, oh, fuck, I'm not special. <laughs> that still happens now you get followed by someone big like with a blue tick on Twitter and you're like fuck and you look at them and they're following 200,000 people I know like, I hate that it means nothing I hate that every day that's every day of my existence and yeah. I see the tick and I'm like oh man yeah. I, I, I feel legitimate because yeah. someone's following me and then I go it's like 200,000 following 200,000 followers yeah. or whatever and you're that's like that's why oh, the best asshole. thing is like you, when you get followed by people that only follow like 50 people yeah. you're just like yes yeah I know you get I, I made it even <laughs> if you don't care that much like, they're big and I made it they exclusive club yeah that's right yeah (laughs) um so i wrote down this morning because i think there'll be some people that listen to this and i was telling you before i recorded like i've got people that obviously from australia across across the country but i've got people in the us the uk new zealand for whatever reason a large group of people from japan as well and in our travels and this is part of the back of our rendition of the yolo video we try and like tell people about the YOLO video as a reference especially for people from other countries and we try and say um, like about Australian culture mm. and so we use this as like an indicator okay, of yeah. what Australian culture is just because it's just so over the top mm. and and a lot of people just don't get it we're in a bus 
um, going from the airport to this venue in Jakarta earlier in, early this year. And so Mark, who's heavily featured in, in our version of the video, he's trying to tell the girl who's our tour guide what YOLO is, and he's trying to get it to load up on a phone. And it was borderline like, I don't know whether this is the most appropriate country or place for to be showing like this young girl yeah. <laughs> video of yeah. someone getting their shit being raped. <laughs> so, so what? What was her reaction? Oh, uh, she. I think she typed it down, and then afterwards she sent us a message and just said, "I don't understand" <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but we but you, we use that as like as like a like a, an indicator for some people just to really sort of go oh like what's it like it's living in australia we go, oh i just watched this video and people were like just shot i think that's the best kind of compliment i can get because it that's when if you know, it's hard for me to comprehend but you're reaching more, more, less of like oh just a funny video i'm like really reaching like a cultural level <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, this is this is just a dumb video it's amazing well especially like americans and apologies for any americans listening at the moment but Americans think that we've got kangaroos like just in our backyard. Yeah. Some people, some of us do, I guess. But uh, you know, just like the most ridiculous yep. stereotypes. So it's the best opportunity to give a video like that because then they, for some of them, they think it's like the truth. They go, "Oh my yeah. god, like this is real." Apart from some of the unrealistic human sort of aspects, where there's yeah. this giant rat or whatever that's yep. talking about. I mean, about they fucking think we write like kangaroos to school. Yeah, like most yeah. of them too. Yeah. And Australians perpetuate the lie too. They will say, like, oh, yeah. "Yeah, yeah, I don't." And I'm probably if I go to LA, I'll probably tell everyone I'll that do too. It. Fuck it, it's it. That's but I know what you mean. It's like they they watch Damon Darren and all that shit, and it's so alien to them. And I guess it's it's a nice in a way where that shapes their view of Australia. If that does happen in any way, I'd feel great about yeah, that. I think it's cool. It, just, it feels good to add to, even if it's in a very minute, small way. It feels really good to add to Australian culture in a in a way. I think it's cool. I mean, we were in an Uber at one stage in Atlanta, and Mark's convincing the Uber driver, this black lady, that. He's a he wrestles crocodiles, and she's just like, he stands, she kept turning to the rest, just going, "He's kidding me, right?" And we're like, "No, no, he actually." Yeah. She's, oh my god, she's freaking the fuck out. Yeah. She's, this is amazing. Like, I yeah. can't believe it. And and then using like going back to the YOLO video, using that as an example to give to people, and they're just like, yeah. "Oh, is this what it's like in Australia?" Yeah. Oh, I don't know if I want to go there. Country <laughs> shit talkers. The funny <laughs> thing is, we get annoyed at people being like, we get annoyed at Americans thinking that we ride a school and kangaroos but it was, but, uh, it was but, us we're yeah, the ones we, that we started it we started, we started it. That we also hate other aussies going over and blowing up the the ochre accent yeah, yeah. and making a big song and dance it's yeah like, oh, I shut up I, I reckon everyone does that though if i am i bet if i'm going to america and i'm talking to some chicks i reckon my, oh, my Australian accent probably will go up a it bit it does and it'll be kind of subconsciously too and that's embarrassing. It that's does cringy. because, and I've found this over the years when you're talking to somebody because their accent's so drastically different to yours, you suddenly become so self-conscious of what you sound like compared to them. Yeah. And especially Americans, because I think a lot of our sort of uh, entertainment and everything over the years, movies and music and everything like that, it's it's American. Yep. And so when we talk in comparison to them, we sound like fucking idiots. Yeah, yeah. So we we tend to like overcompensate then and we just like blow it out of proportion it can go the opposite way though because yeah. i've got some american friends and i do that too but i also i'll also kind of find myself talking i'll, I'll have to talk american in a way but like you know instead of saying sidewalk i say no what do they say oh, footpath? Footpath. No, yeah. we say footpath, we say and, footpath and they say, and they say, say sidewalk. sidewalk yeah i'll have to say that sometimes and veranda they don't they don't know what veranda oh, are yeah, they yeah. say uh bench or something what is it like yeah. um uh, so the, not a balcony. They don't say balcony. No, either, they, they've think. got deck, po deck, deck or deck. porch. Yeah, deck. They yeah, say, yeah, I deck, remember deck, and yeah. I have to start saying stuff like that, and I'll catch myself. I'm like, you fucking wanker! What are you doing? <laughs> just say, just say. Why do you have to say it for them? Just say it in the normal way, and they can learn. You know yeah. what the words mean. Well, so I wrote down some stats because not so much to put you like just to make you feel awkward or anything, but I think for people listening to this podcast and haven't really been exposed to what you what you do so check this morning your youtube channel alone has got almost two hundred thousand subscribers almost, yeah. almost. It's a, a couple hundred I think it's been like that say. for six months now. it's it's sat there it's yeah, just plateaued, it's plateaued yeah. <laughs> and there's across all the videos is 31 million views yeah and so there's like seven or eight videos that are all over a million yolo's got 7.7 siggy butt brain's got 6.8 yolo 2's 2.8 and then it goes down 2.1, 1.7, right down. But like you said, I mean, we we're talking about before, but that's pretty fucking incredible. I mean, yeah. mind you, 
there will be people like us that have probably watched the Yolo video hundreds of times, but overall, like 31 million times that people have sat in front of a screen and watched your animations is pretty... It is. It, it, that's more than population of this country. Yeah it's, yeah, it's nuts. It's really cool, and I forget it. You, you get used to it. Yeah. And when the best part is when you meet people in real life. Yeah. And they're like, oh, that really had an effect on me. I watched it. Me and my friends quote it all the time. That's when it's like, that's when it hits home finally. Yeah. You're yeah. like, oh, fuck. Yeah, shit. People actually watched it. Because like I was saying, the numbers, I don't think our brains can fully comprehend how many people... You have to sort of almost What's use it? it in those in those p- perspectives, like oh, that's more than the population of this country, or that is. Some yeah. people go, oh, it's X amount of football stadiums, or blah blah. Or yeah, just those yeah. stupid comparisons. Yeah, that's that's but, the way you have to do it. Yeah. You have to like think. I always think like, yeah, football stadiums yeah. and shit. And it's like fuck, and then you almost there's a part of your brain that goes, no, 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 that's Im- that's impossible. It, couldn't, yeah. it can't be true, and you kind of block it out. You're like, no, you know, yeah, people, people be, didn't actually watch this shit. It'd be like, yeah, it'd be like you being at ANZ Stadium and watching, I don't know, fucking ACDC or whoever playing, yeah. and then just looking around, going, there's more there's less people in this stadium than would have actually yeah. watched your your YouTube videos. The, the flip side oh, of that, though, is there's probably heaps of people that just saw it and were just blank-faced or hated it or just, like, oh, like clicked it. off it and shit. So, <laughs> you know, I'll always do that. I'll just battle it and be like, nah, 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 fuck it. That's probably good. I mean, it keeps you balanced and, and you don't yeah. have this sort of, like, massive ego from just being this, like, yeah. oh, genius yeah. YouTuber. Yeah, that is my magnum opus. <laughs> Yes, the whole country, more than the population of the country has seen it. I'm aware. I've seen the numbers. Currently working on my memoir. Yeah. <laughs> my YOLO memoir. <laughs> All right, man. I think that's um, I think that's pretty good. All right, All right man. Let's get another beer. Yeah, yeah. All right. Sounds good. Thanks so much. No worries. Appreciate man. it. Thanks, folks. If you want to check out everything, everything. If you want to check out anything that we spoke about in uh, this episode, please go over to the show notes at andysocial.net. I'm going to have everything that we spoke about there, as well as all the videos, oh, all the videos, some of the videos, fire, I'm doing really well. Uh, some of the videos that we spoke about, I'll have them in the show notes as well, so you can check that out. But um, I'll put links to his YouTube channel, Gillsbury website, everything will be over there. As with all of my previous guests, you can go to andysocial.net and check out the show notes there. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Uh, each month the downloads are increasing and, and the thing's getting bigger and better. So, um, I must be doing something reasonably well. So thank you so much for people that are continuously tuning in and, uh, subscribing and supporting. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's incredible. I mean, it shouldn't be amazing that people want to listen to these uh, amazing guests that I have on the podcast, but, um, it's still it blows me away when I see people making the effort to, I guess, put up with my voice for an hour or so each week. So it's um, it's really, really cool. So thank you so much. If you want to support the podcast further, um, all the usual social media things, sharing, liking, retweeting, et cetera, et cetera. So all that sort of stuff, you know the gist. Um, those things go a long way to get the podcast out to more people and increase those listeners. So thank you so much for people that do those things for me. Um, it's amazing and um, it it's massive help. If you want to take it a step further, I have Amazon portal links and the paypal.me uh, link over at andysocial.net. So you guys know the drill, but for those that haven't been playing along, uh, if you do shop on Amazon, please go to my website first and then click on the Amazon portal link. It just takes you through an affiliate link to Amazon. Just shop as per normal. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you get. So if you get anything suspicious, don't stress. I'm not looking into your cart, but I just get a small percentage of whatever you choose to purchase. And um, it's only tiny, but it does add up and it helps me cover the uh, basic costs of keeping this podcast going each month. Also, the paypal.me function is pretty new, but it's working. Holy shit. Thank you so much to people that are slinging me a few dollars here and there. It's really, really cool. Um, I put it up there as just something that if people feel that they want to do something more and support the podcast more, the option is there. I don't put any pressure on anybody, but if you want to sling me 50 cents, um, somebody sling me, slinged me? I should stop saying that word. <laughs> someone, someone gave me uh, twenty bucks the other day, uh, twenty US dollars, and I thought that was pretty cool. So I, I definitely I made the point of saying US dollars because you know the Australian dollars so bad in comparison. So <laughs> it was really good. Um, yeah. So thank you so much for people that are doing that. That's really really cool. I don't expect it, but I figured it was uh, it'd be stupid for me not to 
put that option up there so at least people have got an opportunity if they feel necessary. So thank you so much as always. Okay, enough of me. I'll be back next week with another episode of the Antisocial Podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Goodbye. You're a